Hello, today we are going to be talking about principal component analysis. I'm not going to bore you with so much explanations or introduction. We are going to get started. But before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe if you've not subscribed. One thing I'm going to mention right now at the start is to tell you that principal component analysis is an aspect of machine learning and it falls under unsupervised learning. Remember, machine learning is divided into supervised and unsupervised learning. Added to that, principal component analysis is under dimensionality reduction, which has to do with reducing dimension of data from high dimension to low dimension. Okay, having said that, let's actually get started with what we are discussing. Before I start, let me just mention this to you. Uh, this is a dialogue between a teacher and a student. It says, why do many students find PCA so difficult? And the response is, because they don't take time to review the prerequisites which is matrix operations. So if you pick up a book or you open some video and start doing PCA without taking few minutes to review matrix operations, most likely you will get stuck. Matrix operations we are going to review today will really be easy. We are going to talk about transpose and multiplication in few minutes, then we continue discussing PCA. All right, so what are we going to cover today? We are going to give a definition and then we also discuss PCM matrix multiplication basics, steps in performing PCA. Then this is another topic that some find difficult, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We are going to talk about the basics, scores and loadings, and then how to choose number of principal components. So I assure you by my skills and by, by my, my the knowledge I have that if you pay attention, if you follow carefully with a pen and a paper, after now, you are going to understand PCA very clearly and added to that singular value decomposition, which is more like a higher aspect of dimensionality reduction, will also be easy for you. So let me give a definition. This definition, you need to know it, and it's very easy. It says, principal component analysis is a dimensionality reduction technique that allows us to reduce high dimensional data into something that can be explained in fewer dimension. So what do we mean? Let me just give an example what we mean here. So assuming you have a data x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, and then you have And then you have all this data here. The question is how do you plot it? So let's say you have all the way to uh, to x and maybe you plot in the x. Oh, sorry. Let me let me draw it well. You can plot x1 against x2, and then you plot x2 against s3. Let's say this give you this, and you plot x2 against s3. It gives you something else. So basically, you'll be plotting uh, x. Choose two. What it means if you are plotting one against the other, taking two features and plotting, you have this number of uh, plots, and that will be uh, something like uh, x into x minus one. I can't remember here. Yeah. So, which will give you something uh, really large. So, when you have data in high dimensions, which is so many features, and then it will be difficult to plot because it will give so many plots that you will not be able to visualize this data. So what we want to do is to reduce the dimension. And that is why we say, instead of doing this, we can reduce this data and then maybe have only two, only three or maybe only two features. And this will be able to, might be plotted in two dimensional space. So I repeat, high dimensional data made up of several columns, which we call several features or several measurements. This is not talking about the number of observations, which is maybe one, two, three. This is not what we are reducing. Take note, what we are reducing is the number of columns, right? We are reducing the number of measurements. So we are reducing it to two or three or maybe four depending on how you want to visualize this data and then that two three or four will be enough to explain your data in fewer dimensions so i repeat we are not reducing the number of observations or the number of rows we are reducing the number of features which is also the number of measurements all right 
good. So let's look at how to perform PCA. There is also a single definition that you need to put in your belt. It says, principal component analysis is performed by carrying out again the composition of the covariance matrix. So this word appears again, so meaning that we need to have something to do with matrices. So that prompts us to do a review. We need to do a review of matrices and basically we are going to uh, review transpose which is very easy and then we are going to review multiplication yes. so <clears throat> so let's actually get started right now so let's review matrix multiplication. The easiest way to review, oh, sorry, let me take a good pen. The easiest way to review mat matrix multiplication is simply take a simple matrix. So let's assume we have x1, x2. Uh, okay, let's uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. So let's say these are matrix X. We want to multiply by matrix Y. Let's say matrix Y is Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, and Y6. So what happens in this multiplication? So what is going to happen? You have a matrix that is like this. We have the first item in the matrix will be X, one y1 because we multiply this by this and then we multiply we, uh, we multiply and we also multiply this by this so we have x1 y1 plus x2 y4 right so this is what we have in the first row so we take this, we have also x3 y1 plus what? x or x4 y4. So this is the next item on the row. So if you continue in this way, if you have this matrix, it will be 3 by what? By 2 multiplied by matrix of 2 by 3 you end up with a matrix of 3 uh, by 3 so basically the, the, resu the resulting matrix The resulting matrix if you are multiplying if this is n by m and this is let's say m by m the resulting matrix will still remain the same number of of of, uh, of rows of this but then take the number of columns of this right i think i i think this is a bit confusing so i'm going to end this video and then i'm going to repeat uh, in the next video we are going to take time to review mat matrix multiplication so let me uh, pause here so that I get this right and use a, a very good example because matrix multiplication is very, very important in understanding the principal component analysis. So let's switch to lesson two. Let's actually do mat matrix multiplication. I'd like to thank you for viewing anyway.